College football is the ultimate team sport. All for one, one for all. But some days, you can't ignore the individuals. Robert Griffin III is the electrifying leader of Baylor. Back from a knee injury, with blinding speed and an accurate arm. His TCU counterpart is Andy Dalton, a man rewriting the record books in Fort Worth with a win total worth its weight in gold. It's Texas Hold'em, Bears, and fourth ranked Horn Frogs on Versus. in the 90s, Horn Frog fans are ready for a party. Let's go, Frog fans, go, Frogs! Woo! Woo! Big 12 Baylor bounces into Amon G. Carter Stadium to tangle with number four TCU. It's college football on Versus, presented by Windows 7. A very pleasant welcome to you. Alongside Kelly Stopper, I'm Joe Beninati. Playing big-time college football in these hot conditions is physically taxing, Kelly. But what about the emotional price tag on this game? Emotional price tag, you absolutely bet. These schools are 80 miles apart. Managing the emotions early in this heat is going to be extremely important today. TCU is well-deserving of its number four national ranking. Great teams farewell on both sides of the football. Quarterback Andy Dalton leads the offense. And you can't get more experience and Andy Dalton. He does it everything. He manages the game well. He throws on the run. He makes plays in the passing game, but with his feet outside the pocket is extremely important. But do not lose sight of the fact it's about defense here at TCU. Wayne Daniels, production, getting sacks, Tank Carter from that level number two, sideline to sideline, and then the mastermind is still this guy right here. You can see the result. Gary Patterson's great defense. They're on track to have a very good defense this year. So that means the Baylor Bears have to fight fire with fire. <laughs> Offensive spark plugs. Robert Griffin III, Kendall Wright, they must light up. If you're looking for a spark plug, Griffin is your man. Very dynamic. A big arm, once again, outside the pocket. If you get pressure, you got to get him to the ground or he's going to make you look silly. But at the end of the day, he has other playmakers. Wright is the guy out in space that will make people miss, and he can take it to the house. Well, he's some kind of dangerous. Defensively, the Bears will hit hard and swarm to the football. Forcing turnovers would be great, but the challenge of corralling Jeremy Curley is no easy task. Kickoff straight ahead on Versus. Just about set for Baylor and TCU today with college football on versus. Lindsey Soto has the sideline covered this afternoon. And Lindsey, it's TCU football, a very hot ticket. Well, to put this into perspective, Joe, the last time these two teams played here, there were 9,000 empty seats. This time, over 2,000 people will be watching the game right up here in the standing room only section. To say that Fort Worth has caught Horn Frog fever would be an understatement. Not only has the mayor implemented Go Purple Fridays asking school children and businessmen alike to wear purple on that day, but the owners of the buildings downtown have even started lighting their buildings in that color on Fridays. School applications are up by 2,000 since last year, and season ticket sales are up by over 25% from their previous high. I guess going to the BCS has its privileges, Joe. Yeah, it sure does, Lindsay. They have one heck of a team to follow here in Fort Worth, Texas. An intrastate matchup today. Out of the Big 12, Baylor comes to town dressed in white. The Bears won the toss. They elected to defer. It'll be orange, or rather, purple and black clad TCU to receive with a pair of speed merchants waiting. Greg McCoy, Jeremy Curley back deep. Baylor's Ben Parks is ready to get this one going. In front of a standing room only crowd. We are underway on versus. Five yards deep. It's a touchback. And the Horn Frogs get their first touch offensively. Quarterback is Andy Dalton. Just win, baby. No one's done it more as a QB for TCU than this man from Katy, Texas. He's the reigning Mountain West Conference Offensive Player of the Year. Does it with his feet and his arm. Head coach Gary Patterson tells us, Kelly, they just love his leadership. 
Yeah, and you can't get more experience than this guy in his fourth year as a starter, and, and he really downplays that. He said, if you're going to be around long enough, Joe, obviously you're going to win a lot of games, but he is very good, has progressed in the offseason and getting quickly, more quickly through his progression in the passing game. They give him a lot of options as he comes to the line of scrimmage. This is first and 10 from the TCU 20. Play action for Wesley. Snap it out there. There's a Jimmy Young being driven hard out of bounds. And there's a flag. Personal foul. Face mask. Number seven, defense. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Antonio Johnson is that outside linebacker that is one of their speed guys, but you can see right there at the end of the play, I didn't actually see a face mask on that play. A little light going in, but Antonio Johnson is that guy from the outside that makes a lot of plays with his speed. Empty backfield, five wide, and then motion back. It's Wesley on the play fake. Dalton. A carbon copy pitch and catch to the outside. Tight end Evan Frosch making the catch. The E-Harmony starting lineups. Horn Frog offensive line, loads of experience with four seniors. Jake Kirkpatrick at center, one of the finest in the land. Backs and receivers just wind them up and turn them loose. Youth is served at tailback with Ed Wesley. Jimmy Young is the deep threat. Couple of first down strikes for Andy Dalton. They move inside Baylor territory swiftly. First running touch for Ed Wesley, a guy who's averaging close to eight yards a pop this year. Baylor defensively, speaking of pop, the front four will play with it. Phil Taylor is massive in the middle of 350 pounds. The linebackers aren't very big, but they all arrive at the ball quickly. Chris Francis is the play calling controller. And the secondary boasts three seniors. Clifton Odom is in for an injured on Taurus Bryan today. Chance Casey is another guy with very good range, as well as Tim Atchison. Second and seven. Wesley hammers his way for first down yardage. Dropped down at the 30. Byron Landor makes the tackle for Baylor. And Wesley is more of a pounder. He can, or actually, he's actually the glider kind of gasher type of guy. It's Tucker that they like to get the tough yards inside, but Wesley obviously can take it up in there as well. Sophomore from Irving, Texas. Horn Frogs are driving. Dalton changing the plays. Checking with his wideouts on first and 10. They run the option. Wesley on the pitch. Hit hard there. Good tackle by Antonio Johnson. The Bears ask him to do a lot from his linebacker position. It's a gain of two. Antonio Johnson is really a guy with safety type of skills, but now he's that fast outside linebacker. And you can see right there, he gets off the block from Curley inside. And he was the, the contained guy outside, Joe. Him getting off the ground was extremely important. 22-year-old senior Kelly, he's there for him every day. This is his 18th straight start. Second and long, let's call it second and eight for the Horn Frogs. Dalton in the gun. Looks over the middle on the post, wide open, touchdown! TCU came out throwing the ball. They're an offensive team that likes to establish the run. They ran it a couple times, and then off a play-action pass, Dalton finds Curley really uncontested into the end zone. Ross Evans on for the extra point try. Smacks it on through. This TCU team is known to jump on people early, Kelly. They do it on their very first drive of the afternoon. And Curley is that guy off the play-action that they want to get involved in this game plan early. TCU ran it a couple of times, and then they come off of that play-action pass, and there's the ISO right there. And Johnson is number seven. He had to engage Curley, and he didn't do that. He got peeking, in, cut, cut, peeking inside at the play-action pass, and then it's easy for Dalton to Curley in the end zone. 
Jeremy Curley, such a playmaker. Redheaded Andy Dalton over there on the phone. You can see him from a, a mile away. Yeah, that, that senior header QB. here doesn't have to do with the heat today. Such a winner. These guys, though, when they get cranked up offensively, is, you can see they get in that red zone, they convert, they put it away. And they do it quickly, longest drives under five minutes. They're a quick strike offense right now, at least early in the season. Kevin Sharples ready to hit it for TCU. Terrence Williams, the deep man for Baylor, number two in the white. End over end. Terrence Williams from the nine. Swiftly across the 30. Where Baylor will begin offensively after a 24 yard return. The offense led by Robert Griffin the third. The man to watch today. Sophomore from Copperas Cove, Texas. If you blink, he's going to run by you, even with a surgically repaired knee. And the coaches tell us he's packed on muscle, Kelly, and that makes him very <laughs> solid looking in the pocket. Yeah, if this young man is any more physically gifted than he was before the injury, I don't want to meet this guy on a football field. Fantastic speed. I mean, world class speed as he's in the shotgun to start for Baylor. They run the option. Hornfrock string it out. Corey Grant makes the stop defensively. The E-Harmony starting lineups. The O-line pretty young, featuring two Canadians, eh? Left tackle Danny Watkins from beautiful British Columbia on the NFL radar. Backs and receivers. They're going to spread you out. Jay Finley runs angry. Kendall Wright makes catches every week. And it'll be extremely important for this Baylor team as a whole, but this offense in particular, to be composed early in this game. After the loss of five, Griffin to throw. Protection starts to break down. We hear whistles. Illegal procedure, the preliminary indication. Ball start. Offense. Number one. Five yard penalty. Second down. And number one, Kimball Wright. Kendall Wright was actually going in motion. Go ahead and finish the lineups there, Joe. I can I'll do that. It's a 4 2 5. Daniels is the latest version of a sack happy lop up front. TCU's terrible two at linebacker. I mean that in a good way. Tank Carter, Tanner Brock, they find their targets. The secondary has changed at the corner positions, but as usual, these five fast, physical. T.J. Johnson is the glue back there. Jared Salubi has entered the backfield for Baylor. Griffin the third to throw. Scampers away from pressure, and then he's knifed down. Stands the lead. Mapunga hovered on top of the quarterback. A pickup of three. Coach R. Bryles does a play call in the head coach, and he really does it without a play sheet, which is somewhat unique. It's all about instincts, and you can see what he's done in three seasons as the head coach. He really seems to have a foundation in place right now. You're seeing more and more athletes show up on that side of the field. Gary Patterson's marks are just terrific here in Fort Worth. He's brimming with pride over this confidence, over this uh, program and what it's achieved in recent years. And they are week by week earning national respect by the bushel. Deservedly so. Third down and very long here in the first four minutes of the game. TCU already on top. Jeremy Curley with a touchdown reception. Griffin the third on the pump fake. No open receivers yet. Maponga chasing. This one is zipped behind its intended target. Incomplete. And a third and long situation. Standard procedure to stay out of trouble is to throw the screen. And it was actually supposed to be to number 23, Jay Finley. The line is out there. Finley's out there. But so is TCU's defense. A good job. Throw the ball away. Line up and punt the ball away. Looking for Josh Gordon, not finding him. This is an excellent matchup. The game within the game here. Punter and punt returner. Curley, one of the most dangerous in the business. And Derek Epperson, who will punt for Baylor, is a consensus all Big 12 punter. Honorable mention, All-America. He hammers this one. Curley from the 22. Jukes and jives to the 27. That's where TCU's second possession will begin. The Horned Frogs, so formidable here at home in Fort Worth. 
Curly all by his lonesome. Frogs on top by seven. Cruising down University Drive here in Fort Worth, Texas. Plenty of purple on display. And I think I have to take 35 West to the airport tomorrow, but I'm not sure. I'm not going to worry about that. Big, big crowd inside of Eamon G. Carter Stadium. It's college football on versus presented by Windows 7 with a fourth-ranked Horn Frogs on top of in-state rival Baylor by seven. Around the end comes Ed Wesley. Into the waiting arms of Tim Atchison and Antonio Johnson after a short gain. What you want to keep track of early in this matchup, TCU wants to establish the run, and they actually are very balanced and diverse. Wesley carries the ball, Tucker, and also Dalton, almost equal touches. But as soon as you start getting lathered up, they like to go deep and throw over the top, and we've already seen that in this game. TCU already on the board with a touchdown. Baylor didn't give up one in its first two games. That hadn't happened since 1960. Out of bounds, diving there. It's Matthew Tucker. Elliot Coffey forced him to the sideline. Horn Frogs pick up nine there. It's going to be interesting to see. We've heard so much about Baylor's upgrade in speed defensively, and that's what TCU did typically likes to take advantage of. They get their speed guys out in space, and they probe for a favorable matchup. We'll see if, if Baylor can hang in there where that's concerned. Matthew Tucker's freshman year was outstanding. Joseph Turner was the lead back last year. They go around the end with Curley. Chris Francis, Elliott Coffey there. Jeremy Curley, they want to get him as many touches as possible in as many different ways as possible. Yeah, and that's the key right there, Joe. It's, he's kind of like an offensive pro. They move him around, they get it to him in a lot of different ways, and they're searching for a favorable matchup, and when they find it, they'll kill you with it if you don't make adjustments. This is second and six. Six minutes into the opening quarter. TCU's second drive of the game. Tucker bouncing off of tacklers. Johnson, Antonio Johnson wrapping him up along with help from Tracy Robertson. Lindsay Soto has an injury report. Lindsay? Guys, the Baylor Bears, uh, their starting left cornerback in Terrace Bryan did not start this game, will not play. He has a pulled right hamstring from last week's game and hasn't been able to do more than jog since. His backup is Clifton Odom, who is the son of longtime NFL linebacker Cliff Odom. He's over here getting his left ankle taped. So right now, Romy Blaylock is in in his place. They're on their third left corner of the game. Quickly turning into a mash unit. As the Horn Frogs work swiftly, Josh Boyce makes the catch there. Byron Landor makes the stop. A.B. and Taurus Bryan had to deal with injuries last year for Baylor. They were hoping he was going to be up to snuff. Yeah, and he's one of those guys that not only has track type of speed, but he's also the long rangey type of guy. They like to have him in a zone, and then he's very good at that quick th two or three steps out of a burst. So that's an important development. Lindsey talked about Clifton Odom. He can fly 4.3 in the 40, but not with a bad ankle if he's dinged up already today. Dalton hands it off, and Ed Wesley has an open field in front of him. Wesley marches in. Touchdown, Horn Frogs, 49 yards. Well, Joe, if Baylor's going to load the box, you better make a tackle because there's nobody in the secondary when Wesley gets into it. Baylor Bears in their green and gold under siege in the first half of this first quarter. Place kicker Ross Evans missed one of these last week, ending a long string for himself. No problem there. Horn Frogs on top 14 zip here in Fort Worth. Ed Wesley. He's the glider in the backfield. Well, this is the fast lane to freedom. All alone for 49 and six points.
sold out and standing room only. Eamon G. Carter Stadium in Fort Worth. They're seeing a good show if they're rooting for the Horn Frogs. On top, 14-0. Ed Wesley, the latest to strike. And Kelly, over the first two possessions, they've been letter perfect. Oh, they have. And when TCU can establish the run and then play action pass over the top of it, they're extremely difficult to defend. Kevin Sharple is ready to kick off for TCU. Mikhail Baker, Ahmad Dixon back deep. That's Baker, five in the white. Both of these teams into this clash with two and all marks. A sidewinder. Booted a bit there by Baker. He recovers and gets chopped down at the 26. A return of 21 yards as we revisit the TCU score. And what we need to look at is Baylor wants to get up to the line of scrimmage, but Byron Landor isn't going to recognize the motion guy does not have the football. You have to have better reading and a diagnosing. He's the last defender back there. When he misreads this, there's nothing left in the way of Ed Wesley. A simple strike for TCU and a 14 zip advantage. Karon Johnson, Jay Finley in the backfield with Robert Griffin III, his dad, Robert Griffin Jr. On the handoff, the hard running Finley with the, a solid looking gain of 12. Colin Jones there to make the tackle. And this is the Robert Griffin the third effect because TCU wants to make sure the quarterback does not have the ball and then it's just Finley right up the gut. That's the focus is on the quarterback but Finley is a very good runner especially inside. Griffin bolting out. Ridden out of bounds. And he just glides his way for another 11. Colin Jones getting a starting assignment today with Tyler Luttrell injured, a hamstring injury keeping him on the sideline. You just word, used the word glide. Is he's not a glider? I mean, he's a very smooth runner, a big strider, but it happens very quickly. He's got four wide outs in the pattern. TCU, a team that just loves to jump on you, go for the throw right away. You see all those times they've had 10 nothing leads or better. Handoff inside. Here's the room. Legs churning ahead. It's Terrence Ganaway. Dropped by Jason Teague. Pickup of nearly 16, maybe 17 on that run. Ganaway is more of the pounder. Watch it right up inside. A good fit initially by Baylor up front, and then it's the big pounder. Known for his pass protecting, but that's a pretty nifty run. Bouncing it out to the left. Should be pretty fresh. He only had four carries last week in that win over Buffalo. On the ground for Salubi, he's knifed to the turf. Tanner Brock was in there from his linebacking spot. And will be all day, along with Tank Carter, his cohort in crime. And Brock takes over for Darrell Washington at that middle linebacker position. Remember, TCU only has two of them in Illegal there. formation, five men in the backfield, offense. Five-yard penalty, first down. CFO officials today, Kelly, Mike Defee, our referee. TCU plays that 4-2-5. They only have two linebackers, and Tanner Brock is really the middle linebacker taking over for Darrell Washington. But the bow cow now is really Tank Carter on the other side, makes plays from sideline to sideline, a ton of speed. Tank Carter, first name Ricky, as we see Tanner Brock, a, a guy who made a freshman impact a season ago. First and 15. Griffin to throw. Shuffles his feet, fires one low and off the hands of his target, the tight end, Brad Taylor. Jones was running in coverage. That coverage for TCU has been very, very sound thus far. Not a lot downfield, not a lot of separation, and TCU does a nice job. The 4-2-5, so essentially, Joe, they have five defensive back, three safeties. They're almost always in their nickel defense. Second down and a bunch. Changing the play. Robert Griffin getting coordinated. On this second and 15. TCU showing blitz. Griffin over the middle on a crossing route. That was behind his target there. Flashing open Kendall Wright. 
College football on versus today presented by Windows 7 along with Kelly Stoffer and Lindsay Soto. I'm Joe Beninati. So glad you've tuned in for us. Just the third meeting between Baylor and TCU since the Southwest Conference disbanded back in 95. Griffin trying to diagnose this third and 15. Throws quickly into the flat. Karon Johnson was dropped by Tanner Brock. A pickup of seven. This is kind of a tweener distance. That might have been a maintenance. Actually, it looks like they are going to go for the field goal, but Aaron Jones has a big leg. But normally, if you don't have a big leg, you would typically maybe go for it right here on fourth down. It's a stifling day, Kelly. Temperatures in the mid-90s. What subtle wind there is will be at the back of the place kicker here. Aaron Jones, good from 30 and 48 last week. This one's on the way with plenty of distance and good. Aaron Jones gets Baylor on the board. Cue the band. TCU has the advantage. It's 14-3 in Fort Worth. With stars and stripes in the backdrop, we're in the Lone Star State today for college football on versus presented by Windows 7. TCU a 14-3 advantage. The most recent strike, a 48-yard field goal from Aaron Jones. This isn't the start that Baylor wanted, obviously, Joe, but you really needed to get points on the board that last drive to kind of take the, the cap off the bucket, so to speak. But now Baylor's defense has to come up with some answer. You can see every seat taken today here at Amon G. Carter Stadium, a stadium that is set for a very healthy renovation project. It's going to be nice. We come back maybe next year, Joe, they'll have some air conditioning for us here in this booth. <laughs> Don't bet on it yet. McCoy and Curley back deep. This kick is short. The sprinter. McCoy across the 42 yard line. There is a flag down. Mike Hicks helped out on the tackle there in special teams for Baylor. These Horn Frogs blessed with so many speedsters. During the return, holding on the return team, number 33. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first and 10. And what was it that Gary Patterson just told us yesterday? Have to avoid silly penalties on special teams. Yeah, they had a couple of these called back last week. Big plays, and McCoy is that corner that does a nice job in special teams right there at the end. At that point in time, you've had a big play. Let it go. Do not hold or block someone in the back. Last week, they destroyed Tennessee Tech, a school at which Gary Patterson began his coaching career. Flick it out for Curley, driving towards first down yardage, bumped out of bounds by Atchison. Baylor and TCU. Lindsay Soto is going to tell us there's some bad blood that goes a ways back. Yeah, guys, this is just the third meeting between these two teams since the Southwest Conference broke up, so it's not much of a rivalry for the players, I guess you could say, but there's a lot of bad blood between the alumni, and it goes back to the things that happened when the conference broke up, the Southwest Conference. The governor of Texas at the time was Ann Richards, who was a Baylor alumni, and according to TCU fans, she exerted a lot of influence to get the Bears in the Big 12. I'll finish the story after the play. Wesley carving ahead across the 40. Atchison adds to his totals, and we send you back for Lindsay. So TCU fans upset about the political clout that was used to get the Bears into the Big 12, according to them. Baylor uh, TCU fans saw it as the ultimate insult that they were not invited to join. Also, many alums are still angry about that, but of course, one could argue now it was the best thing that could have happened to them. That chip that TCU has carried around on its shoulders ever since has served them pretty well. <laughs> and they have been one of the kingpins of the Mountain West Conference since joining. First and 10 for Dalton. Floats this one on target. Very hard hit. Voice was flattened by Byron Landor. We send you back to College Football Central. Here's Bill Patrick. All right, Joe, it's a Foster's game break. Alabama and Duke, and look who's back. Heisman winner, Mark Ingram. He is healthy, and he is dangerous. Nearly 150 yards and two touchdowns, and they're still in the first half. The tide rolling right now, Joe. 
Yeah, Bill, they've been yeah. impressive. First two games, Kelly without Ingram, without uh, Marcel Darius, maybe their best defender, and, and still they roll right along. A Duke team that's 0-10 all-time against teams ranked number one. This handoff for Tucker on second and short. Baylor doing a better job inside of trying to get off those blocks and TCU established the run in the first couple of drives but this is the first short yardage situation remember the matchup inside with Phil Taylor number 98 the nose tackle on Kirkpatrick that center it should come into play right here uh, Dalton's been pretty good there those numbers were pristine Curly the motion man third and short. And the interior of the Baylor line stiffens there. Antonio Johnson racing in with the help of Phil Taylor. Taylor, you mentioned all that weight, all that bulk in the middle. You see big number 98. Yeah, 98 lost 25 pounds. He is in much better shape. Remember, he transferred from Penn State, had to set out a year, played last year for the first time, and just quite frankly didn't ever arrive at his sea legs. Big down right here for Baylor. Taylor is telling everybody he wants to redeem himself from last year. Gary Patterson's club going to go for it on fourth and short. Fourth and one. On the end around, dangerous. Curly with plenty of wiggle. All the way to the Baylor 31. Coaches were telling us if Jeremy Curley gets off to a good start, he's dangerous. That's a 16-yard run. He's already put six points on and, the board. And you target guys like this early in the game if it's a guy that needs to get off to a quick start. I think, Joe, Curley might be off to a quick start. Yeah, you could say that. Jared Anderson was saying just that yesterday. We get him into it early. You can expect big things. First and 10, TCU moving it again. Dalton, pitch and catch. Breaking loose on his way to the house is Young, and he's just cut down. Atchison got over at the last instant after a pickup of 29. Chance Casey missing the tackle, and right now, Baylor is playing off coverage, meaning they're a little bit soft. If you're fast in the secondary, I think you're going to have to challenge these wide receivers for TCU, and certainly Casey has to come up and make that play. Young only had one catch last week. Hasn't had very many balls thrown to him in the first few weeks of the season, but he's been on target with Andy Dalton so far today. First and goal. Tucker. Pinballs around at the goal line. And he's stopped short. Matthew Tucker had a three-yard run and a one-yard touchdown run last week. It's an interesting situation. Remember, Joseph Turner was the running back from last year, and, and Tucker is one of the two guys coming back, Tucker and Wesley. But Joseph was that dependable short yardage runner. You could count on him getting those yards. Tucker is a downhill guy, but they need to find that guy in this offense that can pick up yards like this. Shivers and Tucker in the eye. This is Tucker crashing to the goal line. Touchdown. Matthew Tucker, he won't say very much, but folks on his team are looking up to him more and more. Another one-yard plunge makes those in purple happy. And Tucker does a nice job of really kind of just sliding outside, missing the penetration inside, and then he's the downhill type of guy that has to become TCU's drive finisher. Evans lining up for the extra point try, and there are whistles. I think a review's coming. Previous play is under further review. Line judge on the near side of the field, Kelly, went arms up, touchdown right away. Yeah, and I think he has the best view of this whole thing, but it's going to be under review. But Tucker's that guy. Last year was kind of a, not necessarily a three-man rotation, but Joseph Turner was the veteran, the dependable guy, but he was also the short yardage, drive finisher type of guy. We can see right here, if, if Tucker penetrates right at the end, it looked like it to me. It's not about the body, it's about the, the position of the football. It just has to finish the, or penetrate the front edge of that line and good night. It looked like he was several inches into that. This should be a great look at it right here. Ball penetrates, that's a touchdown. 
Byron Landor, the 22-year-old senior from Lake Charles, Louisiana, digging in there. Did not appear that he kept Tucker out. I think this is a no-brainer. CFO officials today, referee Mike Defee, waiting for the ruling from on high. After review, the play stands as called on the field. Touchdown. And it has been a ruthlessly efficient TCU team in the first 14 minutes. Yeah, our, our brows knows absolutely no answers defensively for Baylor. And the defensive mind on the other side, Gary Patterson certainly likes what he sees out of his offense. Ross Evans' his extra point try is right down the middle. And it is 21-3, favor the Horn Frogs. Folks, college football continues on versus. We know what you Mountain West fans want. You want high altitude battles in an armed forces classic rivalry. Navy, Air Force, October 2, 2 Eastern. Then two weeks later, the Cougar Storm, Fort Worth. They'll tangle with these number four rated Horn Frogs. It's BYU TCU October 16th. That's 3.30 Eastern only on versus. Couple of nice matchups. I'm looking forward to going back for, to the Air Force Academy with, with the Navy in town. One of the best environments in all of college football, especially when you have those two teams playing one another. Very much so. Mascot Super Frog there was making some friends in the stands. 21-3 TCU. Their last few possessions, they have been racking up the points. Yeah, it's not like they were short drives either. They were methodical and they were fairly quick and efficient, but they weren't short. Terrence Williams prepared for this one from the seven. Racing his way towards the sideline and punched out of bounds there. TCU on top and coach Gary Patterson explains his team's pyramid progression. Pyramid is just like climbing a mountain. Uh, the closer you get to the top, the air is thinner. It's, it's harder. I mean, it's, it's one of those situations where it's, it's steeper. You have, you have a chance. There's more chance of failure. And one step could mean a long fall comparably that the slope's not as, it's not as steep at the bottom. So uh, for us, you know, the pyramid kind of kind of represents everything that, that we try to get accomplished. They want to put plenty of purple on that board. No splotches of white. Griffin connects with Terrence Williams. Williams had six catches last week. That was a career high for himself. Gained seven there. T.J. Johnson getting credit for the tackle. And Baylor going up tempo, kind of a change of pace and getting right to the line and trying to get their offensive fluids going a little bit. Last minute of the opening quarter, second and three. Griffin keeps, darts outside, breaks two tackles and gets flung to the surface by Colin Jones. And that was a true, excuse me, Joe, that was a true quarterback read. And T.J. Johnson, one of those safeties we talked about, number three, has to come up and support, kind of drive down that alley to get the quarterback. But he missed, underestimated, or he underestimated the speed of Griffin on that play. Another passing opportunity for Griffin. He put some mustard on that. It was deflected away. They want Griffin's completion percentage over 60. Not exactly where they want it just yet. His career numbers, though. First ever 1,000-yard QB rushing at Baylor. And he certainly brings that to the offense with his feet. But you're right, Joe. He has to be more efficient in the passing games. Get more quickly through your progression, find the right guy, and then throw an accurate pass in the end. Frog 
Jags rush four on second and ten. Terrence Williams gets that wide receiver screen and gets hammered out of bounds. T.J. Johnson and Colin Jones combining for the stop. It's a pickup of 12. That's a play Baylor likes, and they like to fake it and then run a go off of it. You're right. It's really kind of the smoke screen. You have a wide receiver blocking out front right there, throwing at the knees, and then it's the receiver taking it up the field as fast as he can in Williams. But, Joe, you're exactly right. Look forward somewhere down the road for that receiver that's blocking to actually go down the sideline and try to get a home run over the top. In-state rivals, Baylor and TCU. The fourth-ranked Horn Frogs ultra effective. A 21-3 leader here in Fort Worth. They came out of the tunnel with plenty of fire. Andy Dalton helping to lead the way. Gary Patterson's troops in front by 18 after one for the Horn Frogs. TCU very much looking the part of number four in the land, a 21-3 lead over Art Bryles and his Baylor Bears. And Bryles is a guy, Kelly, along with Robert Griffin III, trying to bring Baylor back, making them rise up. Yeah, and 2009 was to be that breakthrough year, but obviously that went downhill quickly in the third game when Griffin III had to go out because of that ACL. But I think their talent level is up. We'll see if they can get it done in, in 2010. Karon Johnson in motion. Jay Finley is with Griffin in the backfield out of the gun. Finley runs hard with passion. They say he runs angry. Didn't get much there, maybe two. Colin Jones stopped him among a host of tacklers. I think it's Griffin that is really going to have to get it done, not only today, but this entire year for Baylor. He has to play at an extremely high level. They need more out of Robert Griffin the third in the passing game, and we haven't seen it yet today, Joe. Scored a lot of points last week. They did, and Robert Griffin was giving the salute signal. His dad, Robert Jr., served in Iraq. In fact, there was one Robert Griffin the third birthday where his dad was deployed on the very same day. Mom and dad Tyler. so influential in this youngster's upbringing and athletic career. 21-3 for TCU, and Robert Griffin was thinking about TCU and, and what they've accomplished in recent years, and, and he offered a pretty interesting quote. Look at the, the Horn Frogs. You won't see the best athletes in the country, but all the winning that they're doing, people are buying in, and you know, maybe they're not world beaters, but they're starting, they Ooh. have believed. Uh-oh. Yeah. Yeah, and I, you know, I don't disagree necessarily as far as the overall talent level, but rest assured, you do not want to say that in a game like this unless you can back it up. TCU has been there, done that, at a BCS game as early as last season. So you got to bring it, Robert Griffin III, if you're going to say something like that. I don't think Gary Patterson really appreciated that. When we talked to him yesterday, you could see that he was wanting his guys to be ready for this emotional game today. And they have been with 21 points on the board. Second and 12. Griffin double pumps. And then airmails Terrence Williams. 21-3 here in Fort Worth. Let's check in with Bill Patrick back at College Football Central. Time for another Foster's game break. We've got BYU and Florida State, and here come the Cougars. Jake Heaps to Cody Hoffman, but it's FSU 13 to 10 over BYU at the moment, guys. Bill, you mentioned Heaps and Hoffman, two guys who are going to be on the radar screen in the Mountain West for a long time to come in Provo. Third down and 12. Griffin sets his feet over the middle, off the hands, and incomplete. It was Kendall Wright who has a catch in every game of his career, not reeling that one in. And you talked a few plays ago about the mustard that Robert Griffin III is bringing, and that time it was a very nice pass and just went right through Wright's hands. And actually Wright, if I think he, he comes down with that football, he has the opportunity to convert right there on third and long. Griffin just three for nine in the first couple of quarters. Derek Epperson ready to hit it. Had a long of 60 last week. Dangerous Jeremy Curley waiting to get his mitts on. This one's off the side of the foot. Curley. 
covers it up at the nine. There is a flag down. 33 yards on the punt. And we'll wait for the zebra stripes to confer. They're signaling offsides TCU. This would be an interesting decision with our brows if if it's a penalty on the defense. It was fourth and 12. Offsides on the kicking team, number 96. That penalty's declined. It'll be first and 10 TCU. Joe, the thing I was interested with is Aaron Jones has a big leg. Maybe that gets you into field goal range. 21-3 for TCU. Back for more in this opening half with college football on versus. Yeah, on all cylinders, you'd expect that from an experienced team, and you had Wesley running the football and then going over the top, Dalton to Curley, we saw the play before, and that's what you see, a diverse offense with many weapons that Dalton can go to. First and 10 for TCU, averaging 10 yards a pop. Dalton running effectively, scampers out across the 20 to the 23, giving close to 14 there. Number 14 runs better than it looks, doesn't he? He doesn't look exactly comfortable, but he's very efficient. And remember this running game from TCU really is three-pronged. Dalton can carry the ball, had 20 carries coming into this game, but then you have Tucker and then you have Wesley. A lot of guys can carry the football effectively for the Horned Frogs. Dalton was kidding around with the local media. They were trying to compare him and Robert Griffin III running the football. As Dalton holds again, keeping this one close to the 27. Four yards on the gain. Byron Landor ushered him out. But Dalton had a good-natured chuckle. He said, I'm probably not going to win any races against Robert anytime soon. You know, but what's interesting, Joe, it, it gives TCU the ability to keep expanding offensively. It was Wesley inside early off that quarterback read option. It is an option. The quarterback can keep it. And now Dalton is seeing that and expanding to the outside with that option run. Sends three wide outs to the wide side of the formation. Here's that quick screen inside. Jeremy Curley, they have made a mission to get him the ball in this first half. At least a half a dozen touches. Yeah. And those are design touches, and it's kind of a, a target type of guy Curley is. How can we get him the ball? And it's almost he has his own special list on the play, play sheet. This is when we want to get number 85 Curley the football. How often and how early do we need to get it done? Dalton hasn't had a pass hit the turf yet. Logan Brock, reserve tight end in short motion. Dalton's 10 for 10. Antoine Hicks, who didn't play last week, is pretty close to first down yardage. As we check in with Lindsey Soto for more. Joe, you would be pretty hard pressed to find a more popular person in Fort Worth these days than Andy Dalton. Everyone you talk to raves about this guy. The guys on the team look up to him. The fans love him. He was the last guy on the field on fan day, signed every autograph, took every picture. When it came to his attention recently that a couple of boys that came to practice had been getting teased at school about their red hair, he went out of his way to meet them and tell them he thought their hair was cool. He says it is important to him that he's remembered for the way he is off the field. He says that's way more important to him than the thing he does want it. Yeah, Lindsay, he's been a hero to very many people here for a lot of different reasons. And just look at the resume, look at the background. It's impressive. And Gary Patterson has talked about that this is the perfect guy to represent your program. And if we want to teach young people that are playing this game in universities all over the, the country, emulate this guy. He's the benchmark. His offensive coordinators don't even want to think about him being a senior and moving on next year. This handoff for a short gain, if any. Hosting just one race a year, the IZOD IndyCar Series makes its annual stop at Japan's exclusive twin ring, Motegi. Two races left, a tight point standing. It could be the most pivotal race yet. Teammates Will Power, Dario Franchitti, and Scott Dixon all battle it out. Indy, Japan 300. Tonight, 11 Eastern, right here on Versus. Guys going full throttle, similar to the way TCU has been offensively in this first half. Second and 10 for Dalton. 
Right on the money for the tight end, Logan Brock. Brock dragged to the earth by Byron Landor. Big play for TCU. They're deep in Baylor territory again after a pickup of 25. And Baylor wins first down, gets TCU into second and long, and then it's just a two-man route. They call it a smash route, and you can see the tight end Brock going to the corner. You had Wesley out into the flat, and a very good, decisive, and accurate throw by Dalton. Kelly, in its last six games at home, TCU has over 270 points. Dalton looking for more. This one over the middle and overthrown. It was Curley again, hoping for it along with Sky Dawson. The first time today that uh, Dalton is not connected, and Dawson is arguably the fastest of the Horn Frogs. The reason it was incomplete, it was actually the first bad decision I've seen Dalton make today. There was a safety in the middle of the field. That means the post route is off limits. The middle is closed, and Dalton threw it down there really in traffic. Landor, if he could have picked the ball up in the air, could have picked that one off. Second and ten. Four minutes and change into the second quarter. Snap it out there for Young. Hanging on to him was Chance Casey. Move the chains for TCU after the gain of 11. I mean, this is a chain-moving machine with Dalton at the control, and right now Baylor doesn't have any answers. They're doing it running. They're doing it in the short passing game. Baylor has to get up in the grill of the wide receivers, press coverage, challenge these receivers, make Dalton throw the ball down the field. Stay in the gun, three wideouts in the pattern. Wesley in the backfield with Dalton on first and ten. Option. Wesley takes the pitch, turns the corner on the stutter step, and Chris Francis angles him out of bounds. Seven more yards. Joe, you could hear Dalton managing the run game at the line of scrimmage. He likes the speed option, quick outside. There isn't, wasn't an option inside, so take it immediately to the corner. He checked to that, and they give him a lot of responsibility at the line of scrimmage. They may send him there with three plays, Kelly. He makes the read and then picks which one's best. Absolutely. It's called check with me. You check what the defense is doing, and then the offense checks with you to get Taylor the play at the line. Taylor second charge, team timeout. The Bears asking for time with Gary Patterson's team knocking on the door again. You could very well see them go to that zone option, read option again. It's a, one of their favorite plays around the goal line. It really pressures the defense. Your quarterback timeout. can actually run the football, which Dalton, we've talked about, is willing to. And that really pressures you, especially in the red zone, where it's just one more gap the defense has to fit. Quarterback Andy Dalton right there. He explains how he's the caretaker of his team. For the team to win games, you have to be a game manager. Um, you know, regardless of um, you know what you're capable of doing, you have to still manage the game. You can't make mistakes. You can't make uh, stupid throws. You can't you know do things that are going to hurt the team. So that's where, as a quarterback, you have to be the game manager. Dalton and friends, they've won 15 straight in this stadium, and his passion. Efficiency numbers yeah. continue to climb. And that, that's where he's improved the game. And the efficiency comes with understanding things down the field. Where's your progression and getting rid of the ball quickly? He's obviously becoming more and more efficient in that area of the game. Horn Frogs already over the century mark rushing the ball today. Second in goal. Here it comes. Option pitch. Touchdown, Wesley. Just that easy. I told you they'd come right back with that same look and play. <laughs> that was the exact play. It didn't just look like it. It was the same play. You're exactly right. The speed option, which means get to the edge quickly. It's quarterback keep with Dalton or pitch it to Wesley. And at the end of the day, way too easy by Baylor's defense. Boy, those two sophomores, Wesley and Tucker, are they ever touchdown makers? Evans for the extra point try, and it comes right into your living room. It is 28-3 for TCU. Ed Wesley and Andy Dalton hooking up on the option, and they're running over Baylor in Fort Worth.
I'm Bill Patrick coming up on the Geico Halftime Show. I'm joined once again by Roland Williams and Glenn Parker. We will analyze all the action from the first half in Fort Worth. Then Glenn and Roe will go head to head once again as they debate some of today's big juicy topics. Joe. And I'm hearing, Bill, there may be some debate on Bama's top tailback of the moment or maybe some thoughts on another Texas showdown. We're enjoying one here in Fort Worth. TCU has the upper hand on Baylor, 28-3. Terrence Williams back deep. With sprinter speed. Brought down at the 17. Enjoying college football action today on Versus. Lindsey Soda reminds us that there are also some high school bragging rights on the line. Yeah, bragging rights obviously at stake in this one. A lot of the guys on both of the teams know one another. In fact, five of them went to the same high school, including Robert Griffin III, the Baylor quarterback, and Tanner Brock, who is the sophomore linebacker at TCU, the guy whose job it is to try and take his head off today. They played together at the same time at Copper's Cove. Brock's dad, Reb, is the defensive coordinator, and actually Robert is a huge part of the reason that Tanner plays linebacker. He was a quarterback and linebacker in junior high, but he gave up quarterbacking when he got to high school because, as he says, Robert's such a great athlete. Linebacker was the way to go. I'm sure they'll be chirping each other all throughout the day. TCU has been ruthless in this opening half, better than 300 yards in total offense. Now Baylor would just like a lengthy possession to give its defense some time to breathe in these 90 degree conditions. That is a great point. Their defense has been on the field a ton. Even though TCU has scored fairly quickly, Baylor's offense has gotten nothing done. Second and seven. Robert Griffin III staying on the ground here. Ooh, that was a hard hit delivered to Jay Finley. Tank Carter put the wallop on him, a second-year starter at linebacker. Joe, this was Baylor's game plan to come in here is maintain drives, keep Dalton and that experienced TCU offense on the sideline, maintain drives, and methodically go down the field and end up getting points. Bryles and Griffin, you mentioned it earlier. Two of those guys pretty much attached to the, the hip. Griffin the third was headed for Houston with Bryles and, and decided to come to Baylor. Finley doesn't get much here. There's a flag down. Colin Jones interrupting the play. Illegal formation. Five in the backfield, five yard penalty, third down. And basically what's happening is Baylor has a wide receiver that's on the line of scrimmage and should not be. So he ends up in the backfield. But you have to be able to do the right thing. And actually they may be calling this offensive lineman right here in the backfield is because that's a, a deep position by that right tackle. I think that actually may be the culprit right there. Those guys have to be on the line of scrimmage. But once again, Baylor shoots themselves in the foot on third down. Fourth time they've been penalized today. K. Ron Johnson, about 290 pounds of fullback wow. in the backfield. This is third down and six. Griffin sprints right into the waiting arms of the defense. Wayne Daniels, who's trying to fill the shoes of Jerry Hughes, the All-American who's with the Indianapolis Colts nowadays. The speed option worked for TCU's offense, and that's exactly what Robert Griffin is trying to do there. Get to the edge quickly. He probably needed to pitch the ball right there. The only chance was to the running back outside. Daniels had some help too, Kelly. Corey Grant flashed through your screen. Got a hand on the ball carrier. Curly back deep for TCU. Already with a healthy margin in Fort Worth. This one is lifted high, a towering kick. Curly from the 30, a 50-yard punt. Curly has some room and some good blocking. Curly inside the 30, and it 
is the punter who brings him down. Or else. Jeremy Curley has been flat out awesome in the first 30 minutes today. The wedge is set up, or the wall is set up to that side, and Curley, that initial move was just to try to create angles for the guys blocking on that wall. Once he got to the wall, it, I knew it was going to be a big play. You could see it perfectly from up here. But once again, Curley doing a nice job of setting that punt return off. So dangerous in those kick return situations. He's treated us a time or two to a few highlights with <laughs> college football on versus. Dalton connecting quickly. They want the speed burner there, Sky Dawson, to break loose. As we send you back to College Football Central, here's Bill. Thank you, Joe. It's a Foster's game break. Air Force, a big underdog to Oklahoma today. But watch this play as they spring Tim Jefferson down the right sideline, 38 yards. And this game is tied 10-10 in Norman. Joe. Way to go, Falcons. Wow. Sooners have won 32 straight in Norman Kelly. They're playing today. Jared, two. Asher Clark, both of them were nicked a bit in the game that we had yeah. against BYU last week. So those Falcons will come back, and, and they play hard. Joe, you're exactly right. That offense in particular was revved up last week. It'll be interesting to see if they can finish. When you play a team like... The Sooners in, in Norman, you have to be able to finish. We'll see if the Falcons can do that. Oklahoma, a team that destroyed Florida State last week. Tracy Robertson being tended to on his way to the sideline. 20-year-old junior from Houston, Texas. They've bulked him up to about 280 now for some added pop. Yeah, they moved Robertson from the defensive end position, bulked him up, like you said, and moved him inside at the defensive tackle position to try to give him a little bit more quickness on that Baylor defensive line. Jonathan Jones to the wide side of the formation. Tucker straight ahead. Bumped down. Last man off the pile will be Tim Atchison. Antonio Johnson in there after the pickup of five. Both Tucker and Wesley have been productive in the early stages of the season and especially today. And I like the diversity of, of what TCU can do. And obviously Curley gets the ball in a lot of different ways, but the way they run is in this offense is very diverse as well. Flexes back into the backfield, takes the handoff. Curley around the end. Curley looking for the pylon, not gonna get there. Byron Landor convenes at just the right time or else. The fly sweep and the motion underneath and actually he takes it from the stationary position comes back in the backfield but Curley is that guy we've seen that you get your playmakers the ball out in space and you give them a chance to make plays Curley can do it but a lot of other guys on TCU's offense can do it as well. The math all adding up there for Jeremy Curley. First and goal to the interior and another touchdown for TCU. Gives some raw meat to the fullback, Luke Shivers, who now has five touchdowns on eight career touches. Right now, it doesn't really matter who TCU gives it to, Joe. It ends up in the end zone one way or the other. The Horn Frogs running rough shot over the Baylor Bears. Still with over six minutes to go in the opening half. And they're on the board with five touchdowns. TCU can do the quick strike thing, and they can also bloody your nose on the goal line. Fullback shivers, touchdown Frogs. Easy so far in Fort Worth. TCU fourth ranked in the land, a comfortable leader. 
Just past the midway mark in the second quarter and on top of in-state rival Baylor out of the Big 12, 35 to three. Gary Patterson's been very pleased with his kickoff man, Sharples, getting the ball deep into the end zone, saving some wear and tear on his special teams, guys. Think about all those collisions he prevents if there's no return. This one, four yards deep, and the Bears are coming out with it. Quick moves to the outside on the hesitation. Tevin Reese, 28 yards on the return. TDs for TCU of all shapes and sizes. Well, Curley gets it on the pass, and then Wesley gets it in the run game, and there were a lot of different guys that cashed it in. There's Tucker. The ball changed hands, Joe, but the result was the same, and then they throw it to the big fullback, Shivers, who cashes it in as well, but very efficient, very effective in this first half. Griffin the third out of the shotgun. Finley bear hugged in the backfield, and they swarm him in black and purple. Alex Beloyer, who was fantastic last week, set an NCAA record. He forced three fumbles in that game, that big win over Tennessee Tech. Beloyer is one of those safeties in this 4-2-5, and they're, they have kind of the physicality of a linebacker, if you will, because they come up and support the run extremely aggressively. And year after year in that formation, they are required to do so. You're right. And do it well. Absolutely. Second and 11 as the Bears try to put something together here. They were whitewashed the last time they visited back in 07. 27-0, that was Andy Dalton's debut at the Division I level. Jason Teague making a tackle there. Brad Taylor, after off-season knee surgery to try and help him with some tendonitis woes, the tight end for the Bears. Third down and nine, Baylor working quickly. After much conversation, he's got it in the gun. Happy feet there, and dragged down swiftly. Kelly Griffin with a sack. All fired up on his way back to the sideline. Coach Bryles and the Bears. Offensive possession wise, it has not been good. Griffin is in, or excuse me, yeah, Griffin, Kelly Griffin, number 69, is inside the quick move and actually circled the wrong guy, but number 69, Kelly Griffin, quick move from that nose tackle position. And those two guys, I think, are very underrated. And Griffin and his partner beside him and Grant, they're the anchors in the middle, but they're very active and quick off the ball. Coaches will tell you, Kelly, they've grown up a lot. They've really turned out to be leaders. Curly waiting for this one. A low liner that skips down. Curly from the 37. Not going to finagle his way away from that special teams tackle. There's a flag down. Ahmad Dixon will get credit for the tackle. Still not ready to give us that decision, are they? They can't quite decide, but right now our browser is looking for an answer. And the penalty, regardless of the answer on the penalty, it's not going to be what he needs. Go in the locker room, re regroup, and try During to get something return, going in the second half. Illegal block in the back on the return team. Number one, 10 yard penalty, first down. Folks, this season, Versus.com is your home for college football. Log on and select the uh, winners of all the key games in the college pick'em. See how you stack up against studio analyst Roland Williams. Get completely connected with the Versus college football app for your iPhone or, or Android. You can track live game score stats, even view video updates. Versus.com, your home for college football. Today, presented by Windows 7 with TCU in charge, 35 free. Fly sweep, fumble. 
Dawson spun around and down. Chris Francis interrupting that play. Dawson plays the same position as Jeremy Curley. Kind of the same body type, maybe even more powerfully built, but it's the same kind of package for him. He's really the, the understudy of curling. Dawson, a track and field star, part of that four by 100 meter relay team here at TCU. He only weighs about 160, but they say he can bench 340. Hello. Oh, sounds about like you, Joe. Exactly. It's the short arms. Ed Wesley after a short game. Geico halftime show coming up. We'll turn it over to Bill, Roland, and Glenn back at the studio. They'll break things down from our game here in Fort Worth. Plenty of highlights from around the uh, country's top contests and a little healthy debate on some juicy topics. They put for that third and five for TCU. Dalton on the keep and then hammered down after a pickup of three. Baylor doing a better job inside on that quarterback keep. It was the quarterback read option once again. They shut down the guy outside and Dalton tried to take it up inside and a much better job of anchoring things inside at the point of attack. 290 pounds of punter out there. Anson Kelton. Wow. That's right, I said 290 wow. pounds of punter. He outweighs his backup by 95 pounds. Patterson said he doesn't care what the guy weighs as long as he's effective at what he's supposed to be doing out there. This one turns over. Williams will let it drop. A little backspin English on it. Baylor will take possession from the 14 with flags down. Andy Dalton has definitely been the conductor of this TCU offense as he is from week to week. And he's been very efficient. We've seen on the day he's getting the ball out in the passing game. I really like the progress he's made throwing the football. Very decisive, very accurate, play, which comes from being decisive. Foul. Unnecessary roughness. Return team, number six. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Dalton, as he is wont to do, gets to that sideline, gets right on the phone, gets some things straightened out after his Horn Frogs were forced to punt for the first time today. They had been a perfect five for five. Nearly 20 first downs in the first half. Wow. Yeah. I mean, Baylor has, hasn't had an answer, but Baylor isn't the first defense that hasn't had an answer. But this experienced offense and a lot of weapons and a veteran quarterback, that pretty much says it all. Griffin, the third out of the gun, has to throw it quickly. Makes the connection there right on time for Finley. Out across the 15. That's the one area that Baylor has gotten some plays in is that quick screen game that you referred to a while back, Joe. We just haven't seen it a whole lot. Ten yard gain moves the chains late in this opening half. Another wide out screen. Lanier Sampson this time. Dropped in the process. Greg McCoy and Colin Jones were ready for that one. This will be second and six for Coach Bryles. And the animated Gary Patterson, as always, instructing his defense. Griffin on a bullseye there for Josh Gordon. The ball's loose. And you saw the huge arm that time by Griffin. The quick hitch outside to Josh Gordon. And Josh Gordon did, Joe, end up fumbling on that play, but got it back in time. But watch the rocket arm, the quick release. Expect to see more of this up-tempo and the quick passing game in the second half. Smart-looking tackle there by McCoy. Off the pump fake, Griffin goes deep into double coverage and incomplete. Looking for his favorite target, Kendall Wright. That was off that tunnel screen that we saw earlier where the 
Receiver comes out. That time he faked a block, went up the sidelines, and Coach Patterson told us about that yesterday. He's alerted his defense to it. T.J. Johnson, the safety, did a great job of coming off the hash and defending that play. Big 12 Baylor squaring off with Mountain West TCU. Horn Frogs have the advantage late in this opening half. Griffin to throw, launching this one well over his intended target, out of the reach of Terrence Williams. That's the pass that Griffin has to learn to hit. He had a receiver that was open by about two and a half, three steps. Williams had beaten number 28 Jones. You have to complete those passes. That's the next step that Griffin the third has to go to. Closer and closer to the Geico halftime show with Bill Patrick, Roland Williams, and Glenn Parker standing by at the studio. Griffin threw for 297 in just three quarters last week, a career best for himself against Buffalo. Horn Frog showing blitz, coming off the corner. Griffin, uh-oh! DJ Yendry drops him in his tracks. A loss of eight. When you defend Griffin the third, you have to get to him when you get pressure and then cut off the escape route. Yendry does it right there at the very end. A good job of really just kind of standing up the left tackle on that play and then waiting for Griffin to try to come out the door inside. Sophomore played in all 13 games last year as a reserve. They bulked him up too and Gary Patterson tells us he's learning to play at the heavier weight. Yeah, and he's inside kind of at a defensive tackle position, can get outside at an in position as well. But once again, another very active defender for TCU. We have this from the promotions department. College football continuing on versus. Mountain West fans, listen up. You want those high altitude battles? It's an armed forces classic when Navy squares off with Air Force. October 2nd, that's 2 Eastern. Then fast forward a couple weeks, and it's BYU in here to tangle with TCU. October 16th, 3.30 Eastern. That's always a good show on Versus. Just 15 ticks separating us from halftime. Jeremy Curley hoping perhaps for one more opportunity. You see what he's done today in a variety of ways. If I'm Epperson, I kick this ball out of bounds. Downfield, but out of bounds. Don't give 85 an opportunity. He's a Ray Guy finalist. He hangs this one up, turns it over beautifully inside the 30. Curly from the 27 has room again. Curly just driven out of bounds. Prince Kent made the special teams tackle. Curley brought it back 30 more. And that's going to do it for the first 30 minutes. Today in Fort Worth, Art Bryles bringing his Baylor Bears to town. And in this opening half, it has been the Jeremy Curley show. Oh, absolutely. Hey, if you have a playmaker, how can I get him the football down the field in that opening drive, Dalton to Curley? Hey, how about hand it to him and let him go around the edge? You can see he's very tough in space. And then don't punt the ball to this guy. Punt it out of bounds, or he's possibly going to take it to the house. It isn't like he hasn't done it before. It's the latest installment of Baylor and TCU. The first ever meeting between these two schools came in 1899 in Waco. It finished up 0-0 that day, Kelly. Far from that today, so far for fourth-ranked TCU. Ultra impressive against Baylor. Absolutely. Baylor defensively really didn't have a better answer the last second than it did the first tick off the clock. We are at the half in Fort Worth. Send it to the sideline. Lindsey Soto with Gary Patterson. Coach, you were not pleased with your practices this week. You're unhappy about a few miscues from last week's game. Are you happy with your team's play so far well, today? Yeah, I am. You know, we're, we're used to playing in the heat. We knew we were going to get ready. Uh, you know, they know I have a standard of what I want to happen, and this was a big ball game. I didn't think they were getting ready for it, but obviously, up to this point, we showed that we are. So uh, we'll see how it goes. You guys have done a great job containing Griffin so far. Who gets credit for that? Well, you know, we've been mixing up our coverages and how we twist to make sure we have spies on him. Uh, he's a really good player. They, you know, they got good skilled players. We got to play another half. Good luck. Thanks. Guys. 
Lindsay, we appreciate it. It is a senior-laden TCU squad, a lot of them on defense. 35-3 at the halftime break. Let's get you to Geico Halftime Show. College Football Central, here's Bill. All right, Joe, thank you so much, and indeed, welcome to the Geico Halftime Show. TCU, a big lead over Baylor, 35-3. to Bill Patrick, Roe Williams, and Glenn Parker here. Let's talk about the first half, 335 total yards for the Horned Frogs, and nearly half of those coming on the ground. I think you got to be impressed after watching the first half with the balance of offense passing and running the football. Jared Anderson, Justin Fuentes, they have two offensive coordinators for TCU, and I was impressed with the balance that was really good, in particular, a guy named Ed Wesley the running back was outstanding. So I want to break down the play for you and show you the mechanics, the engine of why it works. You see the tight end out here. He does a good job of slamming going in and out. But watch this one. The Baylor safety is caught up in all the trickeration in the backfield. He's looking at the wrong thing. Great job by Dalton and the team with the play action fake. Sending him over to the opposite direction, then out the back door. It's a sprint. My goodness, Wesley, this man has a whole lot of speed. TCU has been impressive in the passing game, but to me it's the balance that really makes them a great team right now. You know what I see is I see speed across the board. I see speed on special teams. I see speed on offense, speed on defense, and I see great coaching. I see a coaching staff in Gary Patterson that goes out every year and just recruits speed. He understands exactly what he's looking for, and he does a great job of coaching them up. This team, I've watched them for years. Every time I see them, I'm impressed with the speed, but it's the coaching. It's not just get fast guys out there. It's put them in the right place. All right, 35-2-3, all TCU at the moment. Let's get to some highlights, shall we? Number 12, Arkansas taking on Georgia. Well, there's a special guy for Arkansas. His name is Ryan Big Dog Mallet. Look at him right now getting a gimme. 57 yards, Chris Gray. Busted coverage, man. Yeah, hey, it was a third and one with a play action pass. Got him looking, but he's not done. Ryan Mallet, this guy, he is the prototypical stand up and throw guy. This is a screen pass with the fade out on the backside. They get that goal route all the way out there to Ronnie Wingo, 22 yards. They're up 24 to 10. Georgia head coach Mark Rick, not happy at all. Taking time to get his team fired up. What happens? Javar's King, 10 yard touchdown pass from Aaron Murray. There's still some fight left in those dogs. Yeah, and I want you to pay attention to the clock. Just under four minutes. Well, Sean Ely, three yards touchdown run this ties it up at 24. Did I mention to you there's a great guy named Ryan Big Dog Mallet again the big play but also Greg Childs nice Mega Man miss 40 yards pay dirt. Hey this is SEC football no one's giving up. Georgia's got a chance four seconds on the clock we're gonna get a Hail Mary out of Aaron Murray right here he is gonna throw it up and give his guys a chance to come down with it. Let's watch what happens uh denied no go great game Arkansas goes and wins it 31-24. Low winning touchdown coming with 15 seconds left in regulation as Arkansas moves to 3-0. Georgia falls to 1-2. Mallet 380 yards and three scores. Just Arkansas's second victory over Georgia since moving to the SEC in 1991. Alabama star running back Mark Ingram has returned to the gridiron. Find out how he's fared so far today and if he's still the leading candidate for the Heisman. Stay with us. Eamon G. Carter Stadium in Fort Worth, Texas. Horn Frog fans treated to a wonderful first half by TCU. Fourth ranked in the land, 35-3 on top over Baylor. Joe Beninati and Kelly Stoffer with you at the break. And Kelly, before we start this third quarter, we heard the guys at the studio mention it. Care to weigh in now just how efficient TCU was on offense? Oh, incredibly efficient. I mean, Baylor had no answers whatsoever. Run game, pass game. Andy Dalton's only misfire was a bad decision on his own. Absolutely no answers whatsoever. In all the conversations we had with Baylor leading up to this uh, football game, we had heard that they had improved their speed on defense. So defensively, with that added boost, what do they need to do to get more in check with TCU's offense? You know, defensive coordinator Brian Norwood from Baylor talk to us about they're not a real big man-to-man -man type of team man-to-man -man coverage results in being able to press the line of scrimmage and do something with those weapons that TCU likes to use so they have to find a way to press them at the line first 30 minutes it was a purple and black onslaught led by Andy Dalton yeah how about getting Curly off to a great and fast start and then Tucker up inside Wesley on this play right here and and then Tucker pays this one off but it was efficiency 
early drives, and then Shivers gets this next one in the end zone. But Andy Dalton, the trigger puller, sets him up, and then defensively, too much inside. Griffin on this play, a lot of other guys, a lot of purple hats around the football, and Griffin just simply could not get on track. As advertised, TC with a lot of weapons on both sides of the football in the first half numbers. Obviously, they're going to convey a 35-3 lead for the Horn Frogs. Yeah, and you start with the rush yards for TCU. They established the run, and then Dalton is efficient in the passing game. All the big plays came by TCU in multiple ways in that first half, Joe. Third quarter set to begin. Terrence Williams is back deep for the Bears. They'll start things with the football in this third quarter. Not going very far. There's a touchback. Baylor, a team which has put up two wins already. Decisive victories over Sam Houston State and Buffalo. Hadn't allowed a touchdown prior to today. In the first half numbers between quarterbacks, Andy Dalton with the thumbs up over Robert Griffin III. And Robert Griffin suffered from not having a lot of separation down the field in his receiving core. And then anything thing they tried to get going down the field, TCU got after him with pressure. Jay Finley is with Griffin the third in the backfield. Karon Johnson in short motion. Third quarter underway in Fort Worth. Griffin keeps. Throws a stiff arm out, gets to the 25. Tank Carter will get credit for the tackle. It's a gain of five for Griffin. We told you in the first half, the only quarterback ever at Baylor to go over 1,000 yards in rushing. And they have to use his feet, but don't forget about the passing game. But T TCU is very good up front, and right now, they are rushing Griffin in a way. They're not letting him get loose on the ground. Read option. Griffin stacked up. Tank Carter stiffening along with Corey Grant. Give him a gain of one. And Joe, that's the thing right now for TCU. What's happening is you called Grant's name right there and you have Griffin, those two inside guys, the one technique, nose guarding Griffin and the three technique just plays over guarding Grant. They're not allowing Baylor's offensive linemen to get to those defenders, Tank Carter and Brock on that second level. Last thing our Bryles wants is a three and out to start the third quarter, so timeout. he'll take the timeout. Baylor, first charge team timeout. Folks, next Saturday on the Mountain, listen up, it's a huge triple time. header of Mountain West football. Noon Mountain Time, Air Force flies into Laramie, they'll square off with Wyoming. At four, BYU playing host to Nevada. And then at eight, New Mexico and UNLV, it's a duel in the desert. All starts Saturday at noon, only on the Mountain in HD, where the West is won. Temperatures starting to cool in Fort Worth. We started this really? game with temperatures in the mid 90s. I was going to remind you if you look over here and I'm not here, it's because I've melted and I'm a puddle on the floor. That makes two of us. Griffin trying to keep his cool now on third and four. And third and four is a lot better than the third and 10 plus situations they face a lot of times in that first half. Empty backfield, four wide. Underneath, there's Kendall Wright. Getting himself on the board for another catch. He's done it in now 27 straight. A pickup of six. And our Browns knows that you have to win on first and second down and get in a third and manageable situation. That's much easier when you're third and four as opposed to third and 10 plus. On the ground for Finley. Into the waiting arms there of Ibiloye and Stansley Maponga. Gain of seven. Jay Finley had that right ankle sprain last year. He's an elusive runner. He could be a bit of a banger between the tackles, and Ibiloye is going to wait for him there time after time. Second and short. Griffin 
With some running room. Terrific athlete. Spoiled by T.J. Johnson. You know, the basketball coach in Baylor, Kelly, the hoops coach is Scott Drew. He's invited Robert. You know, if you want to come out for the team anytime. And you can see the athleticism right here and change the direction. He's a big strider, but he has a lot of speed, as Joe, you pointed out. But he also has some hops on him. He's a long, rangy guy. He's actually added a little more muscle mass, rehabbing from that ACL a year ago. See the brace on that right knee. You wouldn't know it by the way he's been running. And the coaches, and I think to some degree, Griffin the third himself never had any doubt that he'd get back to 100%. He put in a terrific amount of work in the weight room rehabbing. He'll throw now. Flushed out of the pocket. In space. And run out of bounds inside of TCU territory. Tank Carter was there in hot pursuit. And Tank Carter, Joe, is the spy type of guy that Gary Patterson mentioned with Lindsey going in at the halftime. And the spy is just basically, you forget all responsibilities. You're going to check the quarterback wherever he goes. And if Baylor's offensive lineman can't get out to Carter, there's going to be someone in Griffin's face every snap. Quick pitch. Connecting there with Terrence Williams. Swallowed up by Johnson and Jones. Those safeties flooding towards the football for the Horn Frogs. Colin Jones has had a nice game. He had five tackles in the first half. Tyler Luttrell usually starts at that safety position. Jones doing a great job of filling in for Luttrell. These Horn Frogs. Year after year, high in the national rankings when it comes to total defense. Gets noisy at Eamon G. Carter Stadium on third and eight. Quick pass for the tight end off the hip of Brad Taylor, incomplete. And that's the type of play that Griffin has to make, and the throw is a little bit behind Taylor. I would call that a, certainly as a quarterback a catchable ball. The fake and then the quick right down the seam before the linebacker can react. The tight end has to get his head around a little bit early. And tight end is kind of a misnomer in this offense. They detach the tight ends a lot. And they end up basically just being removed inside receivers. Taylor's another guy who was an option quarterback in high school. Epperson boots this one towards Curley. He waves fair catch and makes it just outside the 10 yard line for TCU after a 39 yard boot. 35 3. Those in purple very pleased in Fort Worth. In beautiful Fort Worth, Texas today, TCU founded in 1873. And TCU actually used to be in Waco, but we'll get into that maybe a little bit later on a beautiful campus that is ever improving. Gary Patterson points out to new recreation centers and academic centers, and new dorms. He says that uh, the football program's on the front porch, so to say, with all the improvements. But uh, athletic department wide, they are picking up the pace. The quick throw and a heavy hit. Curly is hammered. Antonio Johnson all fired up. Antonio Johnson is that speed guy, used to be a safety from his outside linebacking position. And this is what, listen to this. That's what those outside defenders have to do against those inside space guys currently leading the charge. That you have to get on them quickly. Johnson and Tim Atchison finally getting to sink their teeth into one of the Horn Frogs. TCU was devastating in the opening half. Ed Wesley was one of the reasons why. Shook loose from one tackler there, got it across the 15. Wesley over 100 yards for the third time in his career. And Joe, we talked about what is Art Briles going to tell his team at halftime down 35 to 3. You tell him to come out and play extremely hard. We have to have something to hang our hat on. And you see that out of the defense on those first two snaps. But regardless of how good first and second down have been, this is the down that they have to win. Andy Dalton got the best of them in that first half. Third down and five. Baylor rushes three. Dalton puts it on the money out there for Josh Boyce, who had a couple of big catches last week. Romy Blaylock 
making the defensive play. Andy Dalton back in 07 made his collegiate debut against the Bears. One yard TD pass and you're already seeing the same things and then he hits Dickerson on the 14 yard pass. Very good, very efficient and accurate back there as well. TCU prevailing 27 zip. Baylor had won its last three visits to Fort Worth and Andy Dalton all over the record books for this institution. Tucker lowering the shoulder, then dropped by Byron Landor. Back to College Football Central now to visit with Bill Patrick. Thank you, Joseph. Uh, Foster's game break. We've got Louisville and Oregon State doing battle. Jaquiz Rogers right up the gut. 13 yards. Touchdown, and the Beavers lead it 14 to 7 as we send you back to Fort Worth. Uh, William, the Cardinals have lost nine straight on the road, and that's not an easy place to win. And William, I'm the only one that calls Joseph Joseph, by the way. Curly across midfield. Landor has a ton of tackles today. He made six of them last week. Curly gets 15 more yards. This is one of those huge all-purpose days for Jeremy Curly. Oh, yeah, and it's really nothing new, but when we talked to the offensive coaches yesterday, they talk about how if we can get this guy, Curly, off to a good start and get him in the game plan, let him have some touches, he creates energy not only for himself, but the offense as a whole. Running game, Wesley tracked by three and now four Baylor Bears. Landor was the first man there. Gary Mason Jr. was around the pack. You know, Kelly, I enjoyed the Geico halftime show. I always do with Bill Roland and Glenn. Roland and Glenn got into a little debate there over the uh, Alabama backfield, whether it's Trent Richardson or Mark Ingram's I backfield to crow about. I liked it a lot, actually. Second and eight. You know, you'll get a chance to spend a time or two in the studio coming up soon. I'll hammer him. I'll <laughs> hammer him. Roll him. I'll hammer him. Oh, the gauntlet has been thrown down early. Down. Dalton, after checking the play, puts it in the capable hands of Wesley, and he's got running room. And Wesley sprints to the corner. On the hesitation, he's driven out of bounds. A 34-yard gain. You know what this is like, Joe? Andy Dalton is playing a video game. He goes to the line of scrimmage, takes a look at the defense, checks his team into the perfect run, and then gashes the defense with Wesley in this case. When you have a veteran quarterback that seems to have all the answers, it's tough sledding for the defense. Huge numbers. Yards per carry for Wesley are just amazing. Nicholas Jean Baptiste makes the tackle there for the Bears. Baylor began this game with the knowledge that Antares Bryan would not be available or at least not start at his cornerback spot. We've seen a little of Mikhail Baker in there, number five in the white now off of Art Briles' bench. TCU moving closer and closer to what would be a sixth score. Tucker behind Dalton, who makes his read and informs the big fellas up front. Tucker knocked down in the backfield. Two guys hit him quickly. And Terrence Lloyd is going to be active on an end position. Lloyd, who turned 29 days ago. Kevin Elliott, another reserve. A red shirt last year, a guy with big play potential. Baylor's defensive line, they, they want him to be more active. You have really a lot of defensive ends in those four down positions. Curtis Clay through the formation. Dalton slings it out there. Good hustle, good tackle on the run. Atchison with great range taking care of Bart Johnson, who now has catches in 25 straight games. It's the first time I remember Atchison's name being called, a former corner, a lot of body control, a lot of good job of reacting out of that secondary. You can see Ross Evans' first field goal attempt this season, by the way, because of that offense has been so incredibly efficient. Evans, a season ago, Kelly was 15 of 18. They'll set this one up for him. Looks like a 23-yard boot. Yeah. 
on the way in true. TCU has a 38 to three advantage. We'll get you back to Eamon G. Carter Stadium in a moment. The coach toweling off at Fort Worth. A whole lot to cheer about for TCU today. 38-3 leaders, college football on versus presented by Windows 7. Tonight, they host just one race a year. It's the IZOD IndyCar Series making its annual stop at Japan's exclusive twin ring, Motegi. Two races left, tight point standings could be the most pivotal race yet. Will Power, Dario Franchini, Scott Dixon all battling out. Indy Japan 300 tonight, 11 Eastern on versus. Can you say Motegi again? Motegi. I like that. I like that a lot. Terrence Williams repositions back at the near the goal line. Kelly Sharples will hit it. This TCU squad has won 15 straight in Fort Worth. Although they're one up in the Mountain West in that department, Utah has set a conference record home winning streak of 19 straight at Rice Eccles. Terrence Williams skipping by one defender and into a major league bear hug. Lindsey Soto has word on an injured down lineman for Baylor. Yeah, Baylor will be playing the rest of the game without defensive tackle Tracy Robertson. He is on the sideline without pads, limping pretty badly with his left knee wrapped heavily. It is a knee strain. He will not return. One more frustrating thing for the Baylor Bears in a frustrating game so far. Quite frankly, that sideline seems frustrated. No one's really talking to one another. They're pretty much keeping to themselves. Yeah, you can understand why they would be subdued. They came in with high hopes, expecting an emotional clash with an in-state rival, and TCU took it to him right away. Finley dropped after a short gain of two. Tanner Brock adding to his tackle total. Had a fumble recovery last week, a half a sack. He's going to be all over oh, yeah. the statistical charts when the game ends. And remember, Darrell Washington from last season, now it's Tanner Brock's turn. He's doing a very good job thus far. Second and eight. Griffin throws it out there. And too long for Lanier Sampson, one of their leaders in the receiving core. We've talked, Joe, about Griffin's passability. He has a big arm, but it needs to become more accurate. I mean, that's a ball. If you just put it on the back shoulder of your receiver, the defender's not watching, your receiver is, he turns and makes that play, but instead, Griffin airmails it out of bounds. They're hoping he'll get more accurate as the rust comes off. He missed the nine games last year after the knee injury. TCU coming on the blitz. He slips away from it beautifully. Turns on the afterburners. Steps out of bounds at the 36. Give him nine there. Daniels ushered him away. And Joe, you can get a sense of what Griffin brings to the table. They bring, TCU brings pressure. You don't get to him, and so then he can make you pay for it. But this is only a good payoff if he's accurate throwing the football as a good weapon for Art Browse to use as well. Coach Bryles wants to go five wide now on first and 10. Time's a wasting in the third quarter. A sliver over four minutes to go in it. Robert Griffin III, born in Japan. Sets, scampers loose, and then throws one in tight quarters there on the sideline. Good tiptoe by Terrence Williams. He stepped inside of Jason Teague. Off to College Football Central we go. Bill Patrick. And another Foster's game break. Air Force in Oklahoma. Kyle Halderman will score from 15 yards out. Oklahoma's lead now just three points. They've won 32 straight at home. About three and a half minutes left to go in regulation. Joe? Oh, those Falcons, Bill, are amazing. Classy group. Kendall Wright with some blockers in front of him. Shoulder down by Tank Carter. The Air Force Falcons. Troy Calhoun said that schedule was so daunting for his team. They go into Sooner land, and they are giving Oklahoma yeah. all they can handle. It's daunting for those playing that offense right now. They were hitting on all cylinders when we were in there a week ago. It sounds like the same thing today. On first and 10, Griffin going long. Deep down the sideline. Yes, sir. Touchdown, Josh Gordon. 53-yard bomb. Yeah. 
Some of that rust you referred to a minute ago, Joe, I think that some of it just got knocked off. That's the play that Robert Griffin has to make. When I have an open receiver down the field, I have to put it on him. Great job that time hooking up on that play. Robert Griffin was involved in four TDs last week, two through the air, two on the ground via those fast feet. Aaron Jones puts his foot into the extra point. It's now 38-10 in Fort Worth. Robert Griffin with time to throw and launching this one deep. Josh Gordon, the 19-year-old, steps into pay dirt. One of the rare times today, the green and gold fans here at Amon G. Carter Stadium have something to crow about. Griffin going deep for Josh Gordon, and it's 38-10 in favor of fourth-ranked TCU. We were very anxious to see the number four team in the land with college football on versus presented by Windows 7, and they have not disappointed. Wayman James, Jeremy Curley standing back near the goal line to return this kick. It's short on purpose. Shivers, the fullback, gets cut down. Kelly, this gives us just enough time to tee up our Buffalo Wild Wings game reset. A look at the quarterbacks coming into this game, and obviously Dalton has been effective all day long, 17 out of 18. Not bad. Career high, Wesley at 138 rushes, and then Griffin. He started slow, a big play. We'll see if he can carry that on throughout this game. Dalton still in there, tail into the third quarter, throwing that quick slant in and out of the hands of his intended target. Looking for Jimmy Young. Chance Casey was running with him. Dalton, number one at TCU in wins, completions, and passing yardage. Before he's done, he's going to own the record book. Oh, without a doubt. And he does a lot of things well, but the thing I like probably more than anything is what he talked about, the ability to manage this entire offense, a lot of it at the line of scrimmage. Keeps it here on the zone read. Snapped down to the earth by Chris Francis. Give the uh, TCU quarterback four. Let's check in quickly with Lindsey Soto. You guys, TCU inducted five former athletes into the school's Hall of Fame at halftime, including LPGA star Angela Stanford, who was a four-time All-American here, graduated in 2000. How did TCU help prepare you for the career you have now on the LPGA? Well, we had an amazing coach who's still here, Coach Angie, and, you know, the facilities we have here, unbelievable. You can play Colonial, Shady Oaks, and so many other great golf courses in town. Hard to pass up. What have your observations been about the changes in, the, in this athletic department, the school in general? in the last few years? Well, it's been so much fun watching Fort Worth get behind TCU. Um, it's, you know, the football program's been awesome, but, you know, all of our programs have always been strong, and, and Fort Worth's finding out. And you were telling me before we went on camera that you're now, people are asking you for TCU score updates on Saturday. It's kind of nice on tour. Some of the caddies and players are asking, you know, what's the spread, what's going on, how, you know, what do you think? So it hasn't always been like that. So it's fun. Of course, you're following closely enough to know the answers. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you, guys. Ladies, we appreciate it. Lindsay, I'm hoping you could ask Angela. Maybe we could go over to Colonial. Yeah. She could teach me how to spin the wedges a little bit. Yeah, you would need more than one lesson from what I understand. No. Oh, so uncalled but for. You have to start somewhere, though. Anson Kelton will punt. Terrence Williams is back deep. Terrence takes it at the eight. Throws the stiff arm. Makes one miss. And then gets brought down at the 17. Next Saturday on the mountain, it's a huge triple header of Mountain West football. Noon time, mountain time, Air Force and Wyoming will go. At four, it's BYU and Nevada. Then at eight, New Mexico and UNLV completing the triple header, the duel in the desert. All start Saturday at noon, only on the Mountain HD, where the West is won. We talked about Air Force today and the game they played last week, a big win over BYU, and then they go to Oklahoma and have to play. I think that Wyoming game is kind of that bear trap with Navy coming in the next week. They need to be prepared to go to Laramie next week. Baylor will travel to Houston. They'll face Rice a week from today. Only the second time facing the Owls since 95. Griffin the third fires this one complete. 38-10 for TCU. Send you to College Football Central. Here's Bill. 
And another Foster's game break back to Louisville and Oregon State. Louisville tied the game at 14 apiece, but the Beavers responded on their next possession. Give it to Jaquiz Rogers, his second touchdown of the day. And OSU back on top by seven, guys. Oregon State, Bill, has won eight straight home openers, trying to get Ryan Katz in gear at the quarterback position. Griffin complete to Terrence Williams. T.J. Johnson makes the tackle after a pickup of seven. Under a minute to go in this third quarter. Time's a wasted. And Terrence Williams is smarting a bit. Baylor doing a very good job in this half of getting their guys out into open spaces. Get Griffin on the move a little bit in that pocket. Change the launch point and let that big arm take over. He's throwing the ball much more accurately in this second half. Keeps it on the ground for Finley. Bounced down to the turf, shy of the 30-yard line. Stans Lee Maponga, they say the future is very bright for him off the rush end. He made the tackle. Maponga plays opposite of Wayne Daniels. Remember what TCU had on their defensive line last year. They had Jerry Hughes at one end, Daniels on the other. Now Daniels is that guy who's getting pressure. Maponga or somebody else has to hold up on the opposite end. Clarence Leach is out injured, so that's giving guys like Matt Anderson and Braylon Broughton more reps. You'll see them, I'm sure, in the fourth. We are done with three. 38-10, TCU has been running all over the Baylor Bears. But in the third quarter, Baylor gets one back. Griffin to Gordon in a flash. College football on versus presented by Windows 7 today. We're in Fort Worth, Texas. On campus here at Amon G. Carter Stadium, the home of the TCU Horned Frogs, fourth best in the land. Putting that ranking on the line against an in-state rival. Divvy this one up into thirds, and it's all TCU. You're exactly right, and I think Baylor has shown up better in this second half. TCU playing a little bit more conservatively, offensively, and defensively, but Griffin has had a much better second half. Sets his feet, now skips away from pressure and zips one out of the reach of Josh Gordon. When they don't reach 30 points, Baylor has lost 29 of its last 30. That's the threshold mark, or at least one of them for this team. And you would think that that might go down, that threshold, because of better defense. But you can see a better second half, 7 out of 10, finding his receivers. Griffin is going to be on the move a lot because that's just kind of his skill set. Art Bryles knows that, but you have to throw the ball accurately on the move as well. Back in his freshman year, he set a school record being involved in 28 different touchdowns. Robert Griffin the third to throw. Connecting with Gordon. Into the arms of Jason Teague, a senior from Carthage, Texas. A gain of six. Joe, the game plan coming in for Baylor was this offensively. We want to try to get their running game going. They have virtually no running game in this in this either half actually and in the passing game short yardage passing game to maintain possession of the football Griffin wasn't accurate not enough in that first half Curley sets himself ready for this punt return Derek Epperson to hit it along with Kelly Stopper and Lindsay Soto I'm Joe Beninati TCU in control of this one 38-10 Curley settles under the uh, fair catch. And the Horn Frogs will get their first possession of the fourth quarter for head coach Gary Patterson in a moment. We'll bring you back to Fort Worth in just a few moments. College football on Versus is brought to you by Mazda. Zoom Zoom forever. Sweethearts of plenty here in Texas, Fort Worth to be specific. TCU 38-10 on top of visiting Baylor. From Waco, Texas, about 75 miles south of where we are today. Andy Dalton remains at the controls. Keeps it on the ground. And Lindsey Soto has more about the gridiron gang getting involved with the efforts of those on the baseball diamond. Yeah, TCU's football team isn't the only one that's had success in recent years. The baseball team made it all the way to the semifinals of the College World Series last year. Several members of the football team were on hand to cheer them on. Andy Dalton center Jake Kirkpatrick and 10 other guys crammed into two big cars, drove 12 hours to Omaha to watch the games. As you see there, they had some trouble with one of the vans at one point. Ultimately made it there in one piece and had a blast. 
class. One person who wasn't there, guys, Gary Patterson. The coach is a big fan of baseball, but it seemed like every time he went to a game, they lost, so the team blackballed him about halfway throughout the year. Yeah, you'll be staying home, coach. Good thing they had a couple of auto mechanics on that ride. Yeah, no kidding. Andy Dalton, he can do everything else on the football field. He's probably the one that fixed it. UCLA Bruins knocked off TCU in the College World Series. That's a great event in Omaha. South Carolina won it all. Just getting going in this fourth quarter. Couple minutes in, TCU with an outstanding first half performance. They had a 35-3 lead at the break. Third down and short. On the give, Curley out to the 44. Tracked down by Earl Patan and Antonio Johnson. 19 yards for Curley as the statistics today for number 85 have to be staggering. I mean, really, it's it's methodical. And the way TCU does it, they get in third and manageable situations. You can see Tucker out there blocking, and then Curley does a nice job of not going out of bounds. It's not really his MO to go out of bounds anyway, but at this point in time in the game, you want to keep the clock rolling if you're TCU. Two tight ends set. Got to give a lot of credit to the big guys up front. Dalton throws out in the flat to Curtis Clay. Clay lost his footing. He had open spaces in front of him. He gains 11. Curtis Clay, the motion guy on that play, coming underneath, and then the play action, he goes out in the flat. And actually, I got word that I think it was Curtis Clay that was the mechanic on that trip that Lindsey talked about. I think he was the one that got that van fixed. There's a big man in the middle of the offensive line, Jake Kirkpatrick. His wife, Callie, expecting in the month of February, they're waiting on a, on a baby girl. Jake, a senior, so smart. These Horn Frogs have had one good center after another. Stay on the ground. Patan makes the tackle. Matthew Tucker, who's struck again today, carries his weight so well. What is it now, 11 touchdowns in 16 career games behind the efforts of his big center and his buddies up front. And big Jake up front, Kirkpatrick, he only had one year of high school ball, so now to play center where you have to be very, very intelligent to make those calls, that's pretty outstanding, the job he's doing. He was better in hoops, Dalton throws, Burke Johnson's there, Johnson inside the 20. Johnson shaking loose. He's wrestled out of bounds at the seven. Atchison able to stave him off. 37 more yards for Dalton on the pitch, catch, and run. Remember the first touchdown Dalton to Curley in the first half. It's the same kind of play. He's going to be down here is Johnson, and he's just going to release and go up the field right there. The backer has to get out, stop that progression down the field. Dalton does a good job of finding the open man. So dependable, Bart Johnson. You know what you're going to get. You get what you ask for if you're one of the coaches. Tucker stacked up. That's going to be for negative yardage there. Loss of two. Chance Casey made sure of it. We've talked a lot, obviously, about Curley for, for the right reasons. He's been a big part of this offense and usually is, but Curtis Clay and Bart Johnson are those guys that are very dependable. They're inside guys. Actually, they, they play outside a great deal, always in the right place at the right time, and Johnson is learning from Clay and doing a nice job in there as well. Sending Antoine Hicks to the far side of the formation. Johnson is in the slot. Wesley in the backfield with Dalton. Curley in motion. Looking it over, firing, touchdown, Jeremy Curley. Evans on for the extra point try. Another TD catch for Curley. This one, nine yards in total. Evans out of the Bart Johnson hold. Up and through. 
At times, TCU has been surgical today. And Andy Dalton has been the doctor. With plenty of time to throw, finds one of his favorites. And the lead grows in Fort Worth. Here in TCU, it's been go, go, go. They've come and went. The Horn Frogs 45-10 over the Baylor Bears. Mountain West taking care of the Big 12 today in this in-state Texas showdown. And Jeremy Curley, without a doubt, has been one of the heroes. Andy Dalton, another. For the guys in the purple and black, on a sun-splash day, the folks are baking in the stands. It was standing room only to begin, but by now, a lot of the faithful have made their way to the parking lot festivities. Mikhail Baker back deep for Baylor. On a day when just about 48,000 came through the turnstiles. Huge crowd at Eamon G. Carter Stadium. Baker takes it straight ahead and knife down at the 35. Your eHarmony player of the game could be no one else on the TCU side, but 85. Surprise, Jeremy surprise, surprise. Yeah. How many ways can this guy beat you? Pump returns, carries a football, catches touchdown passes, and he's a mismatch waiting to happen if you're going to play TCU. Baylor didn't have an answer. The 09 Special Teams Player of the Year in the conference, and no doubt our eHarmony player of the game today. Over 200 all-purpose yards. First and 10 for the Baylor Bears. Robert Griffin III still in there, quarterback, hands it ahead. Finley has some running room. Just chased down by Colin Jones. Ball bounding free after a pickup of 28. This is what Baylor has been trying to get done all day. You can see the big hole right there. Number 74, Philip Blake is pulling from his center position, leads up front. The quarterback read option, give the ball to Finley. That's a staple in what Art Bryles is trying to get done at Baylor. They call and describe Finley as a slasher. This ball into space there for Sampson, who comes down with it. Lanier Sampson brought down just outside the 10. Teague makes the tackle. And Baylor picking up big chunks of yardage. Almost 30 there. Griffin is getting some of the rust off Joe and throwing the football. That was a nice pass. Give your receiver a chance to make a play on the football. He's got four wideouts with which to work on first and 10. Pump fake. Far pylon. Incomplete. Not going to connect there with Tevin Reese. Coach Patterson with all the pride on the defensive side of the football, hoping that his guys will dig in. He has tremendously high expectations for this program. And Lindsay talked about that at the top, is the expectation for him doesn't change. And he wants his guys to live up to that standard. He didn't see it in, during the week, he's seeing it today. Said great teams worry about today, great programs worry about being good for the future. And that's what he wants here in Fort Worth. Riding into the belly for Salubi. Jared Salubi is chopped down. The linebackers combining there. Carter and Brock to make the tackle. Baylor Ken, as they work late into the uh, fourth quarter, thought they could pick up a first down, but the chains have been put down. Substitutions coming on for the Bears. An empty backfield with the Robert Griffin. Looks over the middle. Sprints away from Maponga. Boy, those feet are fast. He's driven out of bounds hard. Tanner Brock made him pay. Think about the fastest quarterbacks in the nation, Kelly. Uh, who are the guys that might be on your list? I know Denard Robinson has to be there with Michigan. I think Martinez at Nebraska, he's a guy that's becoming a staple in that two-prong attack, kind of that dual threat guy. I think those are the top two on our list, and I think Griffin would be right in that mix, and maybe even more world-class type speed out of Robert Griffin. 400-meter hurdles and track, Griffin's specialty. 
Just over eight minutes left in the fourth. TCU faithful still in full throat. Griffin sandwiched in the backfield. They came a running. Mapongo was in there. Grant Daniels all saluting one another. What you want to do with Griffin is you want to squeeze him from the side and then shut the front door. And that's when he was looking to step up right there. Corey Grant from his defensive tackle position would have none of it. And that's how you defend a running quarterback. Squeeze him from the edges and hold up inside. Corey Grant all conference last year. He's one of the grad students on this team. There's big 57 getting himself a well-deserved breather. Gary Patterson talked about how Grant and Griffin both have become better leaders. He didn't see it early in their career. He's seeing out of both of them now. Run the ball straight ahead with Ed Wesley. Just about the halfway mark of the fourth quarter, Nicholas Jean Baptiste making the tackle. As far as Wesley's been concerned, he's been running very well. He has, and he's kind of the glider, the, the gasher. Came into this game averaging almost eight yards a carry, and that's who Dalton likes to go to. He's a dry finisher, but he's also a guy that can get big chunks, and you're seeing a lot of big chunks in that highlight package right there. The pretty cool twist last year, he was the preseason freshman of the year in the conference, and actually it was his stablemate, Matthew Tucker, who wound up winning that award. Francis adding to his tackle total. Guy who's filling in the shoes of Joe Pavelic. Outstanding four-year starter for Baylor at the linebacker's post. Francis has done an okay job today, but Pavelic is, has big shoes that have to be filled, and I don't think they're getting it right now out of that linebacking situation, but you can see right there the career high for Wesley, 18 pops, 163 yards. That will work, Joe. Uh-huh. Had 137 last year against Utah in a big ball game. First and 10. TCU has been methodical in this second half. They were explosive in the first. Ball bouncing free, but after the whistle, Ahmad Dixon wound up with it. Dixon, one of those blue chip recruits, Baylor coaches just thrilled that this young man stayed close to home. Absolutely, and that's what Art Browse has to do. He has to recruit the hotbed of Texas, which he should be able to do coming from Stevensville High School where he coached so long and is really still a high school coach icon. It's that feeding, that pipeline that Baylor needs to get on the field. It's starting to show up. They have more improvement to make in that area. He wants his team to be fast and fearless. They've run into a buzzsaw today in Fort Worth. Tucker slashing his way near midfield, thrown down by Chris Francis. A gain of 17. You saw on that last play, Wesley actually got dinged up a little bit on that second effort, but then they just bring in Tucker and it's more of the same. Tucker's more of a downhill type of guy, maybe a little bit more physical, but both of them are very productive. Fans giving Andy Dalton an earful as we've got a new quarterback. Dalton getting the congratulations on the sideline. Highly touted Casey Paul Hall out of Brownwood, Texas comes on. Joined in the backfield by Wayman James. Atchison makes the tackle as we introduce you to Paul Hall. Six foot four and 210. They say he's a very good athlete. And even a little bit bigger as, as far as height-wise, and he'll fill out 208 pounds. Andy Dalton is 220. So if you're going to run that option, you're going to have to put maybe a little more weight and become more physical. First thing Jared Anderson said about him, the co-offensive coordinator for TCU, athletic. That's what you get out of Casey Paul Hall. Just needs his reps. He's running the football here. Throws the stiff arm out. Good tackle by Mikhail Baker. Ooh. That got a little ugly. 45-10 for TCU. Lindsey Soto has word about the big, big crowd 
in Fort Worth today. Yeah, I just got the official attendance. It is 47,393. That is the second largest crowd ever here. And it may not sound like much. It's a huge number for TCU, which only has about 8,000 undergrads, guys, and 71,000 total alumni. Now, comparatively speaking, the University of Texas has over 38,000 undergraduates right now. So think about it. If every single undergrad came to this game and every single locally-based alumni came to this game, they think that number is around 20,000. The Frogs would still have to find about 16,000 unaffiliated fans to fill up this stadium. And that is why today's game is so important for TCU. They're fighting for the attention of the undecided, so to speak, Joe. And right now, they appear to be winning. Lindsay, it's a lot of math to follow, but we get your drift, definitely. And this is a TCU team that's set records this year for most season ticket sales. And we've touched a bit upon all the renovations that are due in the near future. They'll start at the end of the home slate this year. 350 separating TCU from a 3-0 start. LaQuince McCall getting his first call of the day. Reserve linebacker in there for Baylor. And Gary Patterson has been laying the foundation and building the program to the point where what Lindsay talked about, not only are they going to reach capacity more often in this stadium, but it's going to be renovated, made bigger. And Patterson obviously has big plans for this program to be maintained and even go that next step up. TCU hits the road for its next one this coming Friday night. It's the battle for the Iron Skillet at SMU. The Frogs have won three straight, nine of the last ten against SMU. 45-10 for TCU and the author Andy Dalton at quarterback. Wow, wow is right. 21 of 23. 91.3%. That dog will hunt right there. And Andy Dalton is the prototypical offensive manager of this offense. It does a, such a good job. The experience more than any other position on the field pays off in droves at that quarterback position. And I say it tongue in cheek, just what he needs, another record. Yeah, no kidding, 91 he'll own them all. He'll them all, Joe, before he's done. On fourth and short, Paul Hall brings into the line of scrimmage. There's movement ahead of the snap. Hurry up, Pat, let's go. False start, offense, number 74. Five yard penalty, fourth down. Two and a half minutes away from the Craftsman postgame show. We'll be turning things over back at College Football Central to Bill Patrick, Roland Williams, and Glenn Parker today. They've been keeping his company, checking in on all the highlights from around the country. And they'll be chock full of highlights in the postgame show, reactions to the Mountain West games that are going on today, and maybe even a look ahead to Navy and Air Force, that armed forces service academy clash that's to come. Maybe we can get another debate out of Big Glenn and Roe back in the studio and we can get Bill to kind of referee a little bit. How about that? I'm sure he'll weigh in. We saw Tim Jefferson, the quarterback for the Falcons last week, and we know we're in for a good one with uh, Ricky Dobbs as the Horn Frogs look to pull off some special teams heroics there, not in time. It's a touchback. Two minutes, five seconds left in Fort Worth. TCU and the Purple People in control. I'm Bill Patrick coming up on the Craftsman Post Game Show. I'll be joined once again by Roland Williams and Glenn Parker. We'll break down this big win by TCU and how it will affect their position in the polls. Plus, we'll have highlights and updates from all the big games around the nation today, and there were plenty of them. Okay, Joe. Okay, Bill, that'll be appointment television, I am sure. Baylor's last win over a team ranked in the top five. Kelly, it came back in 1985 when they went on the road to beat the USC Trojans. They are not going to upend TCU today, ranked fourth in the land and looking very much the part. The guys in the purple and black. New quarterback on for Baylor. It's Nick Florence, who did such a capable job, admirable job last year when Robert Griffin III went down injured. Yeah, very difficult situation in game three. Griffin goes down, and Florence really gets thrown into the mix as a freshman and did a nice job. He has a nice arm, a good feel for the running game, and absolutely did everything that Art Bryles wanted from him last season. Just over 90 seconds left in this one. Baylor 4 and 8 a season ago, 1 and 7 in the Big 12. This pass is incomplete. In and out of the hands of Tevin Reese. 
Baylor's first Big 12 assignment this year will be against Kansas in early October. Kansas get upended a couple nights ago on Thursday by Southern Miss and that's a game that those are the type of games right now in conference that Baylor has to prove that they have a chance to win and then you have to steal one or more from the guys above you. Third down and long here for the 21 year old sophomore Nick Florence. More flags. Paul Sark offense number 63 five yard penalty third down. Big fella John Jones gets flagged broken hand kept him out quite a bit had a bunch of scholarship offers another guy from in state Cedar Hill Texas Yeah, new offensive lineman new quarterback new quarterback cadence usually results in a player two just like that Joe a little different emphasis with each new quarterback in his cadence. TCU rushing five Florence racing for the sidelines and throws this one away the nearest intended receiver Josh Gordon who picked up a second half touchdown Jarrell Thompson has come on for Gary Patterson and the Horn Frogs who have this slate ahead another what Patterson would say is an emotional game in state against SMU then Colorado State Wyoming BYU and then Air Force the date down the road that most people are looking for is when the Horn Frogs have to go to Rice Eccles and play the Utah Utes. We'll see how that one comes out, but a lot of work to do in the meantime. We'll have the uh, BYU game here together on versus in mid-October. Epperson hits this one. Curtis Clay is back and watching it sail out of bounds. Nice catch by Andy Dalton on the sidelines. One more time, we remind you that college football continues on versus. In the Mountain West, Navy and Air Force, that service academy clash on October 2nd at 2 Eastern. BYU and TCU to come on October 16th. That's 3.30 Eastern only on versus. College football on versus today, presented by Windows 7. Down the stretch we go, and Andy Dalton is in very good humor on the sideline. Man, does he have red hair. No trouble finding him in a crowd of people. Paul Hall takes a knee, and time will drift off the scoreboard. Kelly, your first look at TCU, and first impressions mean a lot. Where would you rank them? I would start with Andy Dalton right there and rank them very high. I think they're well deserving of where they're ranked currently. I think their resume coming into this game but right now they have all the pieces in place a veteran quarterback multiple weapons offensively we've seen Curley and then a scheme led by that man right there Gary Patterson defensively right now they have everything that they need to run the table big day of college football Craftsman post game show to go Bill Roland and Glenn are warming up back in the studio as coach Patterson makes his way across. Going to shake hands with our Bryles. This in-state rivalry goes TCU's way. It was the 106th all-time meeting. They came in dead even. TCU broke out on top early in the first half and would not be caught. This one goes in the books, 45 to 10. For Kelly Stauffer. And for Lindsay Soto, for all the hardworking men and women in our crew, Joe Beninati, thanks for your time. We send you to Bill Patrick. He's at the College Football Studio. College Football Central on 